Hello and welcome. You're watching Focus On with me, Yamukhetsu Musapile. Africa, a continent that contributes a fraction of global greenhouse emissions, suffers disproportionately as a result of climate change. African economies largely depend on agriculture, which has seen a 34% reduction in its productivity growth rate, this according to the AU. Now, for more on this and other environmental risks, I am joined by the Gauteng MEC for Social Development, Agriculture, Rural Development and Environment, Mbali Sope. Now, today's event is themed around decarbonizing of the economy and a resilient society. Um, can you just take us through some of the ways the Gauteng uh, government is going towards implementing those initiatives? So what we've done is to call together this Climate Change Summit um, and we've partnered with the Tabumbegi School and because we understand that we really wanted it to be a broader engagement. We didn't want to do it as just government, as our department alone, but really wanted to bring in as many stakeholders as possible, both from government, from academia, from business, from labor, um, youth, learners, and so forth, so that we're able to localize what does climate change mean. A lot of people still think that it's a vague idea um, that is within the ambit of academia, but every day the climate is showing us that this thing is reality. It's with us on a daily basis. You know, before you could predict what the seasons are going to be like. But you can't do that um, concretely now because of all the changes that are there. So we're really wanting to localize this. And part of why we want to have this engagement is that we also appreciate that it's a global discussion that is taking place. But we want to localize it within our South African and African context so that people have an appreciation of what does it mean from a, a South African and African context in terms of this uh, global matter that we're talking about. Because as you know, that the rest of the world is preparing themselves in terms of the future skills that are required, in terms of the different investment opportunities that are there from your electric cars to your solar panels and so forth. Everybody's reading themselves and we really want to get society on board and we don't want to be followers where we're going to end up procuring from the Western world and so forth. We're saying let's arm ourselves and let's deal with the manufacturing base in that regard. So actively in terms of the part of the work that we are doing is, uh, is to localize this message as I indicated. We want to grow our manufacturing base, we really are promoting for business to look into that aspect, but we also have an appreciation that labor needs to be brought on board. I like that you mentioned localization. Now bring it back to South Africa. South Africa is a uh, country that is facing food security as well as water insecurity. What are some of the strategies that the department is implementing to circumvent such issues? You know, the Stats SA just released their latest data. And what it shows is that 52% of our population is food insecure. That's exceptional. And particularly when you consider that they've also indicated that our population is sitting at just over 15 million individuals. So that's a lot. I mean, and you take 52% of that. What we're doing actively is to make sure that we start training and teaching people about agriculture and why it's important for us to do that. A lot of the individuals believe that for you to do agriculture, you need vast pieces of land and so forth. We're bringing in a lot of tech uh, to show people that you can actually be able to grow and feed your household within your own whatever space you've got, even if it's a backyard space that's there. So we're working together with communities. We have employed 6,000 young, old individuals from various age cohorts who go into communities. And these are individuals that we call our, our Gauteng Green Army. They go into communities and they're responsible for cleaning and greening. So they deal with both waste in terms of the amount of waste that is created in the province. As you know, we are the most populated, which also means we create the most amount of waste. So they deal with assisting with the waste that is there uh, in terms of working together with our municipalities. But they also have an important role, and that is the greening aspect. So we also have a One Million Trees campaign, so they help in terms of greening our communities from the trees that we provide, shade trees, fruit trees, but also dealing with the backyard food gardens that are there, the community gardens that we're putting into schools and various social infrastructure that is there. And all of this is about dealing with sustainability uh, and appreciating that let's take better care of the environment. You can't do all of this if your land is affected. Um, and it's about those measures that we put in place so that people appreciate the importance of taking better care of our land so that it can be able to take better care of us too.
Now, strong socio-economic policies have been a, an underpinning in ensuring resilience when it comes to climate change. Now, bring it to Gauteng, which is the economic hub of South Africa. What are some of the ways the department is looking to ensure South Africa remains economically resilient in, with regards to climate change? We don't have a choice. I mean, the majority of the population is here. It, it truly is here. And that's why we're being proactive about the measures that we're putting in place because we understand that we can't sit back and assume that a lot of these socioeconomic problems that we're having are going to fix themselves. So we have an appreciation that we, we need to really be on the ball. We need to bring as much of the various stakeholders on, uh, on board as possible because we appreciate that government can't do it alone. But you need business, you need academia, you need labor, you need all various segments of society for everybody to understand what we are working towards for us to maintain our position as not just the economic hub, but also making sure that there's sustainable development within our province. Now, in your earlier address, you did mention some of the ways um, your department is tackling non-compliance, particularly in the business sector. What are some of the ways that um, private sector players can embrace new energy technologies and kind of meet government halfway in this mission? So as part of the work that we do is also to do your environmental assessments. Um, and we are responsible for any entities or private sector partners that are emitting a lot in terms and, and contributing towards the pollution that we have um, and so forth. So we deal with that from an environmental point of view. And what we've done is that instead of finding them uh, with money is what we usually do, we've began to, to translate that amount that they're supposed to pay back and say to them, buy trees give back to the environment that you have ruined. So we're working um, quite close with that. And I know I think for even a lot of them, they're having a, beginning to have an appreciation that you can't just continue to um, emit all these emissions and pollute the air, affect the surrounding communities within which you work and so forth. And there's no fine. And because a lot of them can afford a lot of these resources. If you find them a big corporate and you say to them one, one million, they can afford that and it's nothing. But when you turn the script and you say to them, provide the trees and you're also responsible for planting, it changes the mindset because now they have a real um, expression of what it means and how they are affecting the community and that they need to feed back into the surrounding communities that they're damaging. So we're doing a lot of work in that uh, regard, but also making sure that we educate even the private sector. Um, and show them the opportunities that are there, that we need to decarbonize. And it's only to not just their benefit, but also ours for us to be able to transition people away from um, the heavy fossil fuels that we are currently dependent on, but to really begin to embrace new technologies that are there. So Minister has spoken quite um, eloquently about the different sectors that are there and the opportunities that are there. I mean, I spoke earlier about your solar panels, um, green energy that is being created, waste to energy initiatives that are there, issues around just the electric cars and so forth. So there's a lot of things that can be done. And we really are wanting people to see challenges, um, solutions and the challenges that we have and see the opportunities that are there. Because that's what entrepreneurship is about. It's about identifying where the challenges are and finding an economic solution to make sure that we're able to resolve it. Now, you also mentioned employment. Status A released some of its statistics on unemployment bringing down the rate to 31.9% in the third quarter of 2023. Now, when we look at the effects of climate change, that is something that also stands at a risk. What are some of the ways the Houghton government is going about um, securing employment figures, particularly for vulnerable populations like women and youth? We're localizing the message um, and what that really means, I mean, basically put, is we're beginning to show individuals that with the many problems that we're seeing around us, there are opportunities for you to make an income. I mean, I always make the, the, a very popular example about your waste pickers. So these are individuals who within your communities carry these heavy trolleys in the morning and at night um, with recycled goods and they're able to sell that off. Those guys make between 2,000 and 7,000 a monthly basis. When you consider that you've got a lot of individuals that are still reliant on the 350 grant. So to transition people away from welfare to work, which is a key program that we're running also as a department, is you move individuals and start showing them that you can be able to make an income and stand on your own. We're not saying there's anything wrong um, in terms of the number of people that we take care of who continue to take care of them, particularly the vulnerable. But we're saying those that can be able to work, we must be able to, to transition them 
into work so that they're able to move away from the reliance on state funding. It's also about bringing dignity back. You know, you feel a lot better about yourself when you know that you're able to provide for your family. Uh, you're able to stand on your own two feet and you don't need to be reliant because you feel helpless. So there's a lot that we're doing in that regard. We're transitioning people and showing them the opportunities that are there within waste management. There's a lot of opportunities even within uh, water conservation. Um, and, you know, the colleague from the Water Research Council would have spoken about some of these. We're showing them agriculture and how to do agriculture in a sustainable manner where you're utilizing lesser water than required. So there's various opportunities that are there. And we really are just enjoying the journey and hoping to get people as motivated as possible so that they have an appreciation of why we need to move this direction. Now I want to draw in COP28, which is on the horizon and the just energy transition. How is your department aligning itself with these climate goals? This is part of those um, interventions that we're bringing because we want to get as many views as possible so that even as we go to those international platforms, we know that we're speaking on behalf of the sectors that we represent. We're speaking on behalf of the population um, that resides within this province so that even as we echo what are the measures, what are the things that we need to do nationally and globally, we know that we speak from an informed point of view. And this is why this is so um, a great platform to have because you're able to factor in what people are saying so that we're not speaking on their behalf or thinking on their behalf rather, but we're able to speak on their behalf well informed by what it is that they have guided on. And not just the government. So we have a one million catch, some of the commentary. And that's how we wrap up this Focus On episode at the Gauteng Climate Change Summit. From me, Gamma Hatsa it's goodbye for now. 